Hello everyone. In this video, I will talk about what are custom connectors and how you can create custom connectors in Power Apps and Power Automate. So let's talk about first of all what is a connector. A connector is a formal definition of a REST API, right? It allows the REST service to talk to Microsoft Power Apps, Power Automate, and Logic Apps. Many connectors are currently available, which are called standard connectors, which allows you to connect to third-party systems with Power Apps and Power Automate. Uh, around 800 plus uh, connectors, standard connectors, which are currently available. Now, the problem is that if you have to consume external API, so for example, you have to consume OpenAI, ChatGPT APIs, then uh, there is no default or a standard connector which is available in Power Platform for OpenAI service. So what to do? So what you have to do is that, uh, what is the solution now? You will be thinking this, right? So the solution is that you have to develop a custom connector. This is the only solution which is currently there that if you want to consume an external service via some API, you have the API link REST API endpoint available with you. So you have to create a custom connector to connect to that system. Now we'll talk about what is a custom connector. So custom connector is a proxy or a wrapper around an API that allows the underlying service to talk to Microsoft Power Automate, Power Apps or Azure Logic Apps. Okay. It provides a way for users to connect to their accounts and leverage set of pre-built actions and trigger to build their apps and workflows. Now, what are the benefits of custom connectors? So as you can see, the benefits of custom connectors is it's a very powerful way to extend the functionality of Power Apps be beyond what is available out of the box. So we talked about some standard connectors. Standard connectors are there, but at the same time, uh, you can create your custom connectors, which allows you to connect to basically get the data or do some CRUD, CRUD kind of operations uh, that is create, read, update, delete kind of operations with other systems as well, where the connector or the standard connector is not available in Power Apps. So you can connect to those systems using some API endpoint. So this is the best benefit or the biggest benefit, I will say, to use the custom connector. At the same time, you can connect uh, to virtually an external system or service, giving it gives you the flexibility to create very rich and integrated experience for your end users. Now, what are the some of the best practices while using the custom connector? So always use the descriptive name for your actions and parameters to make it easy for others to understand what they do. So you have to use it, uh, the descriptive names of your action, you have to use it very properly. Then keep your connector very simple and it should focus on a specific task when you are creating the custom connector. Test your connector thoroughly before publishing it to the end users and documentation is very important for your custom connector so that the other people when they use it, they understand what it is about. So now we will see the quick demo of the custom connector. We'll see this in action. So for this, what I have done is this is the Power Apps environment currently I am in. So here uh, I have created a solution in Power App Studio. The solution name is Custom Connector Demo. Uh, it's always good. You always work within a solution. You have a dedicated publisher while creating the solution if you work in real projects. If you're working in real projects, my recommendation and Microsoft recommendation is that you always create solution. You create anything, whether it's app, whether it's flow, many things can be created within a solution. So that's why I've created a solution here. And now I will click on new here. You will find an option called automation in automation. You can click on custom connector. So I have clicked on the custom connector option. Now what it will do, it will open the power automate screen where a custom connector will be created. And then you have to configure it. You have to configure it in the sense that you have to provide the host URL. You have to create the functions. You have to provide the endpoint URL, API keys, authentication modes, and so on. So that everything we will see in action now. So you can see a, a connector create create connector screen has been opened in Power Automate. When I uh, used when I created a new connector, clicked on the new connector option. Now for this particular demo, I will use an existing API which is openly available over internet and it is provided by Microsoft. I recommend you, you can also try it for your playground, for your exploration of custom connector. So this is a API I'm talking about, which is Quantoso invoicing. 
uh, as i said it is provided by microsoft very well available over the internet you can also use it so this is just for the demo purpose i am showing it you can see here this is an example api for use in learning how to build power platform custom connector so this is a sample api or a example api which i will be showcasing you today you can also use it the url is contosinvoicing.azurewebsites.net so you can see here the api documentation is provided so if i click here the complete documentation of the api will be provided that what all different functions or actions are available you can see add invoice uh, get invoice list invoices list invoice types all the different actions are available i mean the complete model and documentation of the api they have given at the same time they have given a uh, logo image you can definitely use the logo i can download the logo here the logo will be downloaded i can save it somewhere in my uh, desktop i have saved it in the desktop it will be saved there and then i can use the api key as well so this is the api key which you can find you can find the api key here it will be used uh, in our demo so i'm just saving it for the reference purpose for now all right so uh, i'll return to home here and at the same time you can find the open api definition file here now what is this open api definition file here this is the most important thing to understand so when you create a custom connector there are different ways you can create a custom connector what are those different ways you can create from a blank you can create from a open api definition file you can create from postman you can create from github all these are the different ways of creating the custom connector in this particular demo i am going to show you that how you can create a custom connector using open api definition file okay so you click here what it will open it will open a json kind of a format a swagger file it, it has opened in this swagger file all the definition of the different functions are available you can see here add invoice you can see here get invoice these are the different uh, actions definition which are available in this file what you have to do is you have to just right click here and there will be option called save as i am just saving this file again i can save it on the desktop i will save it on the desktop the file name is swagger.json i will click on save all right so this is the api which i am going to use now so let's navigate to the uh, connector again first of all let's give it a very good name so that it is very well understood so i can say invoicing uh, connector so i am just giving a name here that the name of the connector is invoicing connector uh, logo this is the logo first first step of creating the connector you can see there are different step general security definition code and test you have to go through all the steps first we are on the general step in the general step what information you have to provide to create the connector upload the connector icon so i can upload the connector icon directly from the desktop this is the icon which i took and i click on open so the icon has been uploaded and the other thing it asks for the scheme a scheme you can specify either http or https and the host you have to provide this is very important that the host is here contoso invoicing.azurewebsite.net i will just copy it and i will put it in my host uh, you don't have to specify the https you don't have to specify the trailing slash that is absolutely fine so this step is now complete okay now i will go to the second step which is security but before going to the second step let's uh, upload the our uh, swagger file so you can see here the connector has been saved i have saved the connector created the connector now what i can do i am just clicking on the back icon so you can see here the connector is created this is the invoicing connector what i can do is now update from open api file this is the option which you can choose once you choose this option it will ask you to import that file which we saved earlier that is swagger.json file so i'm just clicking on clicking on import swagger.json i have selected the file and i will click on continue now what will happen again the screen will open and it will show you uh, the first screen which is the general screen and again the host url you can specify here which is contosoinvoicing.azurewebsite.net so i'm just specifying that url and now what i can do is i can go to the next step which is security now you can see here that a uh, different type of authentications you can specify either it could be no authentication basic authentication api key or oauth 2.0 in our case it has already taken the api key because because we have already uploaded the swagger file so parameter label is api key parameter name it has already taken and location has already been taken now let's go to the third step which is definition 
now i am in the definition uh, uh, definition step of the custom connector so you can see different actions different actions are already been added as per the swagger file now in one of the action in get invoices you see a uh, orange triangle over here so let's go to that it is asking for the summary so i can write here get invoices this is the summary so that you can see that icon has gone similarly for this pay invoice uh, you can see it is asking for the uh, description that why it is giving you this uh, description not defined what you can do is you can define the description this is pay invoices so pay invoices i'm just writing the same as my description that is how you can specify the summary and the description of the different actions since this new is not required i can delete these actions as well uh, new invoices i don't want this similarly i have a uh, option to edit the properties of the particular action so i am in get invoice schema i can change the visibility to internal and so on all right and then what you can do is all the things are already there what you can do you can do just click on update connector so i'm just clicking on update connector you can see here saving custom connector and finally my connector will be saved and updated so you can see here the uh, connector has been saved and updated now i can directly jump to the test part of it so what i can do is uh, i have to provide a api key now this is most important part to understand now you see here connection first you have to create a new connection all right so when you click on new connection what you have to provide is that it will ask for the api key the api key which we saved earlier so what you can do is you just copy this api key and maybe what we can do we can provide the api key which is required for the authentication i have just clicked on create connection now once this is done you will see a connection will be created in the connection category with the same api key authentication which i have already provided so you can see here invoicing connector this is created on this date and this time now what you can do is you can directly test your operation so you can test one of the operation i can uh, test one of the operation for example list invoices so list invoices i can directly click on test operation and if everything goes fine as per the general step as per the coding step as per security step definition step if i click on the test operation it should give me a response code status code of 200 and you can see in the body the different invoices i am getting because i have used which action i have used the list invoices action so that is how we have created the connector the last step is i'm just clicking on update connector so i've clicked on the update connector my up, uh, connector will be saved and connector will be updated all right so now the connector has been created now what you can uh, do is you can go to the connections on the left hand side in power automate and then it will show you that particular connection which we have recently created now once the connection is created once the connector is created you can definitely use it in power apps and power automate now that we will see in action that the connector which we have created how you can use it in power automate so once the custom connector is created you can come back to the solution and you will find here that a connector with the same name is available which is the invoicing connector which we just now created in power automate now what we will do we will test this connector and for testing this connector what you can do you can go to new automation you can create a cloud flow you can create an instant flow all right we will just test this connector invoicing connector which we have just now created so here we are creating an instant flow we are building an instant flow let me uh, give the name of this flow so i can say list invoices and i will manually trigger this flow so i select this option manually trigger a flow and i click on create what it will do it will create a power automate instant flow with the option with first action as manually trigger a flow so the whole purpose of uh, this particular demo is that how we can use the custom connector which we just now created so the flow has been created with first action as manually trigger a flow i will add a new step here i will click on the new step and for uh, adding the custom connector there is a category called custom when you go to this custom category then only you will be able to see the custom connectors which has been created so you can see here the invoicing connector which we just now created is very well available i have just clicked on it and it will show me all the actions which i want to use for that particular connector 
Now here you can see it shows list invoices. So I've just clicked on list invoices or selected the list invoice invoices action. I can give a connection name, let's say list invoices, and then it is just asking for the authentication. So I can pass the same API key which I used while creating the connector and I clicked on create. So you can see here it is showing me all the fields which are required for list invoices. I can quickly save this flow and then we can test it. Now both the actions have been added, manually trigger a flow and list of invoices. Now we can quickly test this flow. So what you can do is you can click on test, manually click on test again and then it will create a connection and then it will run the flow. So you can see here your flow has been successfully. I will click on done and what it will do, it will show the results which we have received from the list of invoices. So you can check that list of invoices output. You can see here that all the invoice ID we are getting from the custom connector action which is list invoices. So that's all in this video. Thanks for watching it.